Welcome back, everybody. John Arvosa is here from Washington, D.C. How's everybody doing? I am going to let the TikTokers in the cage. <laughs> Hang on a sec. Group. One moment for the TikTokers. All right. Modify my live. Hmm. All right, TikTokers. Where you be? Where you be? Oh, Amanda, you're first. Good to see you. Oh, interesting. I do have to change that. All right. Um, anyway, hey, everybody on TikTok and YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, we typically, hey, Kamal, or Kamal, I'm calling you, Kumar, close. Uh, we take the first five minutes and just have folks introduce yourself, say where you're from. That gives enough time for people to kind of filter in from TikTok and YouTube, especially. It takes a few minutes. See, si, Barcelona. Yeah, I look professional. Eh. I'm wearing a shirt, a T-shirt, but a red T-shirt, if that's a professional T-shirt. Ah, Wales, Finland. Oh, you can't hear me on here? Ruh -ruh. Let me check my settings. Uh-oh. No, you can't. Yeah, you can. Sorry, somebody being – Susan's saying that you can't hear me. Can you guys hear me on, uh, on, on YouTube? Let me know if you can hear me on YouTube. TikTok, I'm sure you can hear me because I got my mic and I put it on today. Now you can. Okay, that was kind of weird. All right, don't scare me, Susan. Anyway, everybody. Oh, where was that from? Oh, from Kokomo. I thought you said Crimea for a second there. I was like, woo. Et bonjour, Montréal. Un jour, j'y serai. J'ai jamais visité, mais toujours uh, voulu. Et voilà. Someday we'll do a broadcast in French. That would be interesting. Bonsoir, du. Strasbourg. Ah, et j'ai visité Strasbourg. J'étais là pendant le Noël. Pendant le Noël, c'était super. Vous avez un très un très chouette marché de Noël. Si on dit, I forgot how you call it, but it was cool. And I've still got my beautiful little bowls. I've, I'm going to show you the beautiful little bowls I bought at the Christmas market in Strasbourg 30 years ago. I always love these. These are these beautiful little hand-painted bowls I got at the Christmas market in Strasbourg, which I loved. And I, I've never used them because I've been so afraid of breaking them. <laughs> um, oh. Anyway, guys, as you know, we go till around five after. We wait about five minutes for folks to come in, which is why we're not talking which is why we're not talking politics yet, but we will shortly. Um, but yeah, we go till around, like I said, another three minutes just to give folks time because it takes a little bit of time on TikTok and YouTube both for people to filter in. So I know Quebec, I've got to visit Quebec. Well, I've been to Ottawa and right across the border, but that's the only French play, French speaking places I've been in, in Canada. Dog is good today, thank you. She was just up and begging for me. But now she's now she's down, now she's down resting again, which is good. Oh, what else? What else? What else? Anyway, a couple more. Uh, another minute and a half, guys, and then we'll jump right in. Okay. Ah. Oh. Well, I think China's a little less likely to invade Taiwan today than it was yesterday. <laughs> you know, we talked about that, but but bien, Montréal c'est le meilleur. Wait, I'm sure it is. Oh, was it Jean suis sûr? Wait, my own, my own. I don't practice it much. La ville du Québec est la plus belle de la province. The province, province, province. All right, there's province and province. Right, that's got to be province. I'm hoping. Sometimes those little differences, I forget. Somebody is dis somebody's agreeing with you on TikTok and uh, <laughs> on YouTube about Montréal being the best. Oh, another minute, guys, and we will we will jump in. All right. C'est en français aujourd'hui, non? Non. Mais j'ai dit peut-être un jour on le ferait. Mais <laughs> je sais pas combien combien de monde on aurait. Mais uh, voilà. <laughs> if we do it in French, I'm not sure how many people we'd get, but it's it could be it could be worth a try. All right, Mario is upset because we're bashing Germany. But Mario, I got to tell you, Germany's been going through this weird back and forth thing, you know? 
All right, guys, another minute and we'll start. As I said, just waiting for folks to come in. Oh, I know Provence, Provence. Provence is the south of France. Provence is the provinces or the province, I think. Provence. Provence, I think. It's confusing. Oh, I do not. I have no language learning tips. I really don't. I mean, I'm pretty good at them, which helps. <laughs> I mean, I think it's easier to learn them there. All right, guys, another maybe 30 seconds and we'll start. Just waiting to jump in. We take the first five minutes, like I said, just to have uh, just to have people time to arrive, to have people time, to give people time to arrive. Um, all right. All right. I will. Uh, let me start. So, guys, uh, I'm John Ravosis here in Washington, D.C. We do this every day. Uh, generally speaking, we've been doing this as a Ukraine update. Sometimes I slip in a little news. Otherwise, like today, I'm going to mention briefly the mass shooting that just happened in America. As always, we had another one, big surprise. Um, and otherwise, it's mostly Ukraine news. Uh, the first 20 minutes or so, uh, I present the news to you all. I pick the stories that I think matter today. And then we do a question and answer that takes us till at least a quarter after the next hour. And if I forget the time or I'm enjoying myself, we go longer. <laughs> and, then, and then at the end, we usually hang out for like 10 minutes and just chat about other political stuff. Not political, other anything stuff. Recipes, our dogs, you name it. So... It's kind of a fun group as far as that goes. So let's jump right in. Um, the time, you know, oh, actually, let me do a quick recap. Yeah, that's right. Somebody had mentioned a few days ago, I've started doing recaps where at the beginning, I'll tell you the stories I'm going to hit. And then at the very end of the show, I just recap the stories again with the headlines, just because folks like that. Why not? Uh, gunman kills 14 students and one teacher in Texas. Uh, in the town of Severodonetsk, which I'm never going to pronounce correctly, uh, the Russians are getting ahead. Uh, the head of Ukrainian intelligence says that Ukraine will be in Crimea by the end of the year. Another Russian general is dead. Guerrillas in Melitopol blew up train tracks. Ukrainian prosecutors charged eight Russian soldiers and mercenaries with murder. Um, there's more, more fallout from the push to force Ukraine to give up land for peace. Russian bloggers are not happy, and I'm going to tell you why that matters. Ukraine has released video of a kamikaze drone destroying an armored fighting vehicle. Um, oh, Russia's paying neo enzies I will call them, neo enzies to fight in Ukraine, which is ironic considering Russia claimed that, you know, they were fighting them, and that's why they went into Ukraine. Poland says Germany reneged on a deal to send it tanks. Um, Ukraine tells President Macron in France to stuff it. See, Germany, we're not just going after Germany. We're also going to go after France a little bit today. Um, the Russians are claiming that Ukraine created monkeypox. That's kind of a fun story. Uh, Google is helping teachers in Ukraine. And uh, I've got a joke about Putin for the end. And I just remembered there's a really nice Estonia video I just put on YouTube. I'm, I'm not on YouTube, on TikTok that I will try to show you guys at the end. So, all right, let's jump in. So, yeah, there was another mass shooting today. Thank you. Oh, I forgot. I'm already forgetting. Thank you for that, Mariu Mariupol, I'm going to call you. That was very funny. <laughs> Mariupol for the origami. Um, for your questions on TikTok, put your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom or the Q&A link. You'll literally see at the bottom of the screen it says Q&A. Click it, enter your question there. It keeps them in a row, which makes it easier for me to find them later. On YouTube, you know the deal, or any of the other sites, enter your question in the bottom in the comment box. And um, if you have super chat questions, I appreciate that because that helps support my work. I'm doing this full time. And as a thank you for doing the super chat, I will uh, get to your question next. Sometimes I forget, usually I do not. And also the, all the fun little TikTok things you guys can do, I appreciate that too for the same reason. It actually does end up supporting the creators when you do that, which is something I didn't know at first. So thank you for doing that. And I will at least try to give you a shout out when you put the, the goofy stuff on the screen. <laughs> so thank you. All right. Anyway, yeah. So gunmen killed 14 students and a teacher at least, <laughs> thank you, in Texas today. Uh, we don't know how young the kids are yet. We don't know if there, there may be more deaths. You know, uh, Texas, you may know, is one of our more pro-gun rights states where they've got the right to carry guns in all sorts of places, in schools and I think even churches. I mean, it's everywhere. I am not a gun guy. 
I've, I've shot guns before. It was fun, but I'm not a gun guy like that. Um, I, I did a video, a longer video on TikTok about this. I'm just kind of over it at this point. Honestly, I don't even want to talk about it to some degree. We have these things every few weeks in our country and nobody cares. I mean, we all pretend it's on the news. Oh, it's been all day on CNN and I'm sure it's all day on Fox News and everybody says how horrible it is. And then they have a vigil with candles and then we all forget and go on and wait until the next kids are shot dead. And I'm just kind of over it at this point. So, um, as I said, I did a longer video um, on TikTok about it. I will give you the summation of that. We have a very strong gun lobby in this country that doesn't want you to do anything to regulate guns. And we're talking, these guys have assault rifles. These guys have military grade Kevlar vest, uh, vests. They have the vests that the military used to stop bullets. Why do they need those? They don't need those for hunting. It's ridiculous. But this is what our country does. And the left, which tends to be the people who oppose, uh, well, mass murder, <laughs> the, the, the gun shootings, the left is useless in this country. Um, they don't know how to fight. They don't know how to message. And I'm just kind of, you know, I'm over it to some degree. I really am. So we're not going to talk about this anymore. It's the same damn thing. And I'm really sick of both political parties because one doesn't want to fix it. And the other couldn't fix it if, you know, if it was a spare tire. So, all right. Um, Severo, Severo Donetsk is what I'm going to call it. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but it's the city that's been in the news a lot lately. Eastern Ukraine. Um, it is the last key city that they're fighting over in the easternmost part of the east, the Luhansk, right? There's sort of two areas. <laughs> Thank you for that. I needed that after this discussion about the kids. We needed something fun on a, a, a ring of flowers on my head on, on TikTok. <laughs> that helps a little. Thank you. Um, two, two parts of the east, right? You've got, you know, sort of the, the two regions in the east. The one is the Luhansk, which is further to the east. Main city the, that remains in that area is this Severodonetsk. The Russians are getting awfully close to capturing it. They're on three sides now. And at least from the folks I'm reading, sounds like the Russians are going to get it. And that means that does not mean they're getting all the east. They're getting one portion of the east. They still want to get the other portion. Um, the head of Ukrainian intelligence, uh, of military intelligence, said today, and I thought this was very interesting, that they will be in Crimea by the end of the year. And I thought, thank you, Lola. I'm actually, or Lola and, oop, hang on a second. I'm putting my, oops, oops, oops. There we go. Oop, okay. Sorry, I'm adjusting my, uh, there we go. Um, the, the, uh, I thought this was interesting. The reason I'm bringing this up, and thank you, Chris, for the, Christy for the galaxy. The reason I'm bringing this up is because I, I'm kind of, Ukraine's playing a little, a good game. They're a good game, but they're playing a little game here. By saying they're going to be in Crimea by the end of the year, they mean they will be fighting in Crimea by the end of the year, that they will actually be you know, on the ground pushing the Russians back. That's very interesting since we have been, I think all of us have been asking for a while now, thank you for the, for the lay there, um, all of us have been asking for a while now, if it's true that Ukraine is doing better in the war and that it looks like Russia is going to have to start digging in because they're no longer going to be able to be on the offensive because they're losing men, they're losing weapons, right? They're losing tanks. They're having to bring in all sorts of old tanks from the 1950s now because they've lost all their good tanks. Will the Ukrainians be able to push back and start to take back Crimea, which is that big peninsula in the south of Ukraine that the Russians stole in 2014? <laughs> Thank you for the hat, Gemma. And this is interesting. The Ukrainians are saying, yes, they are going to start fighting back at the end of the year to take back Crimea. Now, I think there's a couple things going on here. I think they're putting the Russians on notice, but they're also putting Europe on notice. France, Germany, Italy, the New York Times, uh, Henry Kissinger, and I'll tell you about Kissinger in a second. They're putting everybody on notice that they're not giving up land for peace. They are going to get their land back, and their land includes Crimea. And anybody who says otherwise can go stick it. And what is happening is not only did, as I said, France, Germany, Italy, talk a little bit too much lately about, oh, we better have a ceasefire. Um, France allegedly, Zelensky says this, um, <laughs> thank you, uh, Zelensky says that Macron in France was talking about giving up Ukrainian territory for peace. The French deny it. We then had the New York Times writing this editorial that was just atrocious about how basically, you know, the world's going to end if we don't just sell out Ukraine. Well, then Henry Kissinger jumps in, former American official, worked for Richard Nixon, key uh, instrumental in the Vietnam policy, reviled by many now um, on the left. Very smart man, but reviled by many. And Kissinger weighed in at Davos by uh, 
by camera, by video, and said that, oh, yes, we will need to trade Ukrainian land for peace. And the Ukrainians have kind of had it with foreigners telling them what to do with their land, starting with the Russians and ending with everybody else. So I think the, I think Zelensky saying this, or at least via his intelligence chief, saying that they're going to be in Crimea by the end of the year is their way of saying Kissinger and the rest of you, nah. Or yeah, in Greece, as we would say, nah. You know, go to go to hell. Um, and they're putting the marker down, and they're putting the marker down for Russia too. They're telling Russia, hey, Russia, we know you're having a hard time. Just so you know, stop listening to all these Europeans and Americans and everybody else. We're not going anywhere. Thank you, NATOBot, for that. We're not going anywhere, and you're not going anywhere, and we're going to be fighting you through next year, and we're going to be fighting you in Crimea. So maybe you, Russia, need to start thinking about, and this is my thinking of what Ukraine's thinking, you know, that they're thinking, telling Russia, maybe you, Russia, had better start thinking of how you're going to get out of this war of what you're going to give up to make the fighting end. So that's what I think is going on here. The other thing is Zelensky, and I think I even forgot to put this in my notes today. Zelensky said earlier today that there will not even be peace negotiations. There will not be peace negotiations until Ukraine gets its land back to where it was in February of this year. In other words, all of the, the, the extra territory in the east that, that Russia grabbed, that whole strip of land that Russia grabbed going through uh, Mariupol, remember the famous town with the seal plant, going through Mariupol, all the way to north of Crimea, there's a lot of land there, Kherson, another town in a region you've heard about, until all of that comes back to Ukraine, Ukraine's not even negotiating. So as I said, final line on this topic, this is Ukraine laying down a line for Russia, but also for NATO saying, stop screwing with us. So I, I was very glad to see that actually. Um, another Russian general is dead, this time a former general, but still, you know, good job Ukrainians. He was flying a military craft for Wagner or Wagner or however we call them, the far right, uh, sometimes neo-Nazi. Actually, that's another, oh God, I'm sorry, I said the word. Did I put that in here? Oh, I did put that in here. I have a story coming up later about them. But he was flying a, a military jet for the Wagner group or the far-right mercenaries, okay? And uh, hired by Putin to fight in Ukraine, and he got shot down. And they're not sure. They think he might have been shot down with a Stinger man pad. They're not sure what it was, but some kind of anti-aircraft thing. And um, he's a former general, and he's gone, so good, good on the Ukrainians. Oh, and the BBC confirmed it. So this is, this is another case for sure of another general. How many have they killed? I don't even know at this point. 12 or 13, you know? Um, thank you for the, uh, for, the, for the confetti. I never know what to call it, Missy, confetti. Um, gorillas in Melita Pole. This was kind of cool. So gorillas, the UE gorillas, not the ORI gorillas. In other words, citizens who take up arms. <laughs> thank you for the hat, JR. Uh, citizens who take up arms and secretly fight on behalf of the government, dealing with the secret intelligence people. They're called guerrillas. I, I explain this every time because I had used it on TikTok once and somebody asked me what it was. And I kind of realized that, you know, not everybody knows. Um, so anyway, and by the way, mods, they're having a little bit of trouble, I guess, with some of the crazies on, uh, on TikTok if somebody wants to go over there. So Anyway, gorillas in Melitopol, this was fabulous. Uh, Melitopol, one of those other towns that's, <clears throat> excuse me, sort of north of Crimea that is occupied by the Russians right now. Well, gorillas blew up the train tracks. They were working with Ukrainian intelligence and they secretly were able to put bombs or whatever around the train. Tra oh, is, is Yulia in the room? <laughs> if so, hi, Yulia. I see other people saying hi, Yulia. Um, but they put bombs around the train tracks and blew them up. And what's important here is these were train tracks the Russians were using to get weapons and supplies to Melitopol, the town itself, but also to other occupied towns in the region. So good news. And again, I bring up the stories about the guerrillas because it's important because I think a lot of us have been asking up until now, what, um, you know, are people fighting back? Like what's actually going on in these occupied territories? And what we're now seeing in town after town is there is a guerrilla movement that has been formed and is active and is starting to blow things up. So that's good news. Uh, Ukrainian prosecutors charged eight Russian soldiers and mercenaries with the murder of a mayor of a small Kiev suburb. On um, the murder of her and her family, five of the accused soldiers are in the Russian army and three were part of the Wagner group, those private mercenaries I told you about. Uh, the mayor of, I'm going to say, Motijin, I'm going to say, um, Olya Suchenko, 
was found in a shallow grave with her husband and son. And I believe they were, their bodies were, it was clear they were tortured. The boy, I'll tell you just because it's important for the story. They tortured the boy first. They then shot him in the leg, then shot him in the head. And, you know, on from there, just very bad. Um, oh, I can, I can mod Yulia. I just can't see, she needs to comment for me to, oh, there you are, Yulia. Hang on. I can mod you. I can mod you. Boom. I am honored to have Yulia as a moderator. Yulia, go get the bad guys. Um, so anyway, bad story there. More fallout. Oh, yeah. So this is interesting. So a little more fallout from the push to force Ukraine to give up land for peace. Um, a poll shows that 82% of Ukrainians do not want to give up land for peace. That's a new poll just out. Those are really strong numbers. And it's important, I think, for um for Zelensky to get those numbers right about now, especially since he's getting this pressure from NATO, from the New York Times, you know, some sources in America, Kissinger, et cetera. Um, Russian bloggers. This is an interesting story, too. This is one of those stories I like because, as I said, I like stories that I think give you a little bit, that, that tell you a little more about something going on, not just the story itself. It's the kind of stuff, frankly, that spies like, the CIA and other people like that. They like, and in politics, I like it. I like finding stories that... You kind of put them together and you've got a bigger a bigger sense of what's going on, right? And that's why I like those stories about the guerrillas, but also this one. So Russian military bloggers are getting very upset about what's going on. Now, these are not bloggers in the Russian military. These are private citizens who blog about the military. Now, in this case, they seem to be bloggers with Telegram, which is a Russian social media app. Uh, Telegram is a lot of video. There's some text too. Um, I'm not sure if these guys are doing video or what they're doing, but basically the Russians embedded bloggers. Basically bloggers are, you know, private. I blogged at one point. It's regular people who have an opinion and they give their opinion either in little video clips or they write up little paragraphs, not unlike what I'm doing in this show with you guys. This could be considered blogging. At least my smaller clips on TikTok could be considered blogging. Anyway, they embedded Russian military bloggers who blog about the military with their troops, with all of these battles. And these bloggers witnessed firsthand what happened a few weeks ago when the Ukrainians blew up all those pontoon bridges. Uh, remember the really, really bad battle that happened in Eastern Ukraine? And they blew up like three of the bridges. The Ukrainians were waiting for the Russians and it killed at least 400 Russian troops. According to uh, uh, Western intelligence, the Ukrainians say they killed as many as a thousand or more, um, blew up tanks. I mean, it was a, it is a disaster for the Russians what happened here. Well, the military bloggers witnessed it and they were really not happy and they blame the Russian troops, the Russian, not the troops, but the Russian military leadership for this. Well, they're getting pissed again about other things. For example, they were getting ticked off about something going on with the Melito, with not Melito Pol, but with the Azov style siege and how the troops rushed in at one point and they thought it was dumb. Anyways, these bloggers have been emboldened to attack the government and to attack the government on the government's military policy. And the government at first emboldened them because they found it useful. They were like, hey, let's be like the, U actually, I'm sure the Russian government thought they were copying the Ukrainians, right? Let's be cool and use social media and show the world that we can control messaging too. Well, what happened was they empowered a bunch of spoiled little Russian brats who write about the military. One guy in particular on Telegram has 3 million followers. I mean, this is, and let me tell you, that's huge on any social media platform, let alone one in a country like Russia, where it's only about 150 million people. I mean, in America, that would be insane to have 3 million followers in Russia. So this guy has great power. Well, he's now turned off to how the war is going, turned off to how the government's handling it. And he's telling his 3 million followers that he's pissed off. So, um, what I was reading, I think Foreign Policy, which is a very big publication here in the States, very august uh, foreign policy publication called Foreign Policy, they were calling this a canary, in the, a canary in the coal mine of how bad things are going in Russia in terms of public opinion, or I should say rather the beginning of the sort of dissolution of public opinion. The canary in the coal mine is, I always forget these things if you guys know, it's an American, is it a metaphor? I'm not sure what we call it. Basically saying when they are digging coal, 
in the old days, they would bring a bird in, a canary, and have it in its cage. And if the canary died, it meant that there was poisonous gas coming into the cave because they struck it and the miners should get out. So the canary in the coal mine is the, the early warning signal. Thank you, Grandma, for that. Is the early warning signal that something bad is about to happen. So anyway, that story I find absolutely fascinating. F keep your eye open for mentions of the Russian bloggers. Um, Ukraine released a video today of a kamikaze drone attack on an armored fighting vehicle. While the kamikaze drones, you'll recall, are these drones from the U.S., uh, they're called switchblade drones. There's two different kinds. One has a smaller payload in front, uh, explosive, that is used more for going after people. Thank you for that, Hana. Uh, for going after people. The second one is, or for like a, a driver of a truck, for example. The second one is much more powerful and is used for blowing things up like tanks. Well, this must be the second one because they were using it against an armored fighting vehicle. And while the Ukrainians have uh, used these drones before, this was the first time that anybody uh, had seen it in action from the outside, that they had actually released video. So I've got it on TikTok. I don't think it's illustrative enough to show you guys now because it kind of drags it out, but it's it's on my TikTok if you want to check it out. Um, the, the oh yes, so the, the neo Enzies. I know Yulia likes to, well, actually a lot of people call them Yahtzees. We do call them Yahtzees sometimes too but I'm always afraid when I call them Yahtzees that I've got to explain. Although I don't know whether NZ is a word that TikTok filters have figured out. But Rusik, and I'm not going to pronounce this wrong, maybe it's Rusich, Rusik, um, is a group that is a part of the Wagner group, which is are these right-wing murderers, these mercenaries that Putin has hired. Well, these guys are bragging on Russian social media, on VK, VKontakt, which is... Uh, a Russian version of Facebook. It's not Facebook, but it's a Russian copycat of Facebook. And these guys are bragging that they're in Ukraine and they're posting pictures of themselves. These guys are proudly neo NZ. I almost said the word. Proudly neo NZ. You can Google them. R U S I C H. S is in Sam. I C H. Every story you will find about them will talk about how proud these guys are of being tied to neo NZs. So Putin is paying neo enzies to fight in Ukraine. And I mean, I don't even need to explain the significance of this to you, but I will say, you know, this goes back to the whole issue of just what a stack of lies this whole war is. But also, actually, I will say this. What really bothers me too is what kind of government would, would hire guys like this? You know, what kind of government? I mean, we, we've got some people in our country too on the far right who have been cozying up to those kind of guys too. But imagine, I mean, imagine your government literally hiring and paying neo enzies groups who you know are to fight for you. I mean, it just, we are dealing with a whole other kind of animal in terms of this war guys. Um, so here's the part of our Germany. All right. I will say this. I will be fair to Germany. Poland says that Germany reneged on a deal to provide tanks. Now, this was an issue that you guys brought up yesterday, and I hadn't heard about Poland's concerns, um, but the um, I don't know that Blackwater, by the way, has ties to neo Enzies. I'm not going to defend Blackwater in a million years, but I'm not convinced they've got that. Um, Poland says that it provided around 240 tanks to Ukraine of its own tanks, and that Germany had promised it would then, thank you, Borderline, for that, it would then provide the uh, tanks to Poland. In other words, Poland gives up 240 tanks to Ukraine. Germany gives 240 tanks or whatever to Poland. It says there was a done deal and the Germans backed out. The Germans are saying that, and the Germans are giving kind of a cagey answer, I will say this, but they seem to be suggesting that that the maybe the Poles are asking for more now, that they want more modern equipment than was agreed to. It, I will say that we don't know the full story. I will say that. But it doesn't look good because we have had this back and forth with Germany. We seem to have had this already where there's this sort of good Germany and bad Germany that keeps cropping up with regards to all this stuff. So, you know, let's see. But I will leave it at that. Um, Macron, this was interesting. Ukrainian official basically told Macron in France to go stuff it. This was, um, ah, I'll just read you. This is a paragraph from the New York Times. 
the chief of the presidential administration of Ukraine, in other words, so somebody working with uh, somebody working with Zelensky, Andrei Yermak has told an audience at the World Economic Forum in Davos that his country rejects any suggestions of forging a special relationship with the European Union, an idea floated by President Emmanuel Macron of France. He says Ukraine is only interested in gaining full membership in the EU. I kind of like that. Macron was playing, and, and I will say this, Germany, you know, France has got its own issues here. Macron has been playing a wild game here. And I do wonder to some degree with Macron, because Macron's been sucking up to Putin from the beginning and his election's over, but you know, the right has been growing. I, not the right, the far right. This is not the right. The far right has been growing in, in power in France and it's scaring people. And I don't know to what degree, thank you, Jessica. I don't know to what degree Macron and maybe even Schultz in Germany are doing this for a domestic audience. Maybe their audience wants them to be a little waffly on the whole Ukraine thing, you know, be a little, don't be so negative with, with, with Russia, you know, work out, see if we can work out a deal with Russia or some kind of things like that. I just, I just wonder whether that's not some of what's going on here. Um, the Russians now are claiming in other news that Ukraine came up with the monkeypox that it was Ukraine that created it in those secret bio labs that the Russians claim the, uh, the Ukrainians have, that the Ukrainians don't have. Um, but now they're claiming monkeypox. So, and again, you got to wonder, actually, I should say, it's not just for a domestic audience. That's the kind of crazy stuff that they would love for somebody here, in, again, in the far right in America, or maybe even the far left, you know? You could get a Glenn Greenwald or somebody maybe in the far right. You could get Tucker Carlson on Fox News or maybe Marjorie Taylor Greene or Rand Paul. But but to get basically the wackos on each side and to give them some kind of ammunition just to sow doubt, even though to us it just sounds insane. Um, Google is providing Ukrainian teachers with 42,000 laptops. And, okay, I've got a joke and then a video to show you. And then we're, we're not done. Don't worry. Then we're going to do the question and answer. So, the joke is, so Putin keeps threatening nuclear, uh, threatening nuclear war. He threatened to bomb right, Berlin, London, Paris, even Ireland, Daniel O'Neill. And he keeps threatening you know, nuclear war with everybody. And his people were starting to get really worried. So he turned to them and he said, no, 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 you don't have to worry about nuclear war. Because even if there's a nuclear war, all Russians will be going to heaven. Well, God found out and applied to NATO. It's hard to it's hard to say without people here because I can't actually hear the ha 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 ha. <laughs> I thought it was I liked it. It was a good joke. People people on TikTok liked the joke. They called it a dad joke. The um the other thing. Let me get the. Uh, it is weird telling a joke like in silence though because even if the joke was good, you feel like it just you feel like it just died <laughs> because the whole room's quiet. Now let me. Uh, and I will say that too. That's one of the things with public speaking you learn is you get kind of a vibe of the audience as you're talking. And I will say this, Americans like to do it. I don't know in other countries, but when we talk politics, we like to throw in jokes and things and be playful and maybe not jokes, but be kind of playful and punny. And you get a sense from your audience, whether it's working or not, it's very strange not to have the audience to know. So let me show you, this was a really nice video that just came out. And I just posted it of, here we go. It's, well, let's see how long. I may not, I may not put up the whole thing, but it is the Estonians. I haven't gotten the backstory on this yet. The Estonians put this out and it's a really nice video of them doing the, I'm just like, I'm, I'm, there we go. Making it a little brighter for you guys. Oops, maybe not. Okay. Leave it the way it was. Sorry. It's, the Estonians singing the Ukrainian national anthem, but it's really, it's just really nice. All right, let me, uh, I'll play some of it, like I said. <laughs> okay, one sec. All right, let's, we're going to take a break for a second. <laughs> oh. Sasha, Sasha. I know my dog's different barks, by the way. I'm going to play it in a second. That That's my dog's... Sasha! That's my bark my dog does when the neighbors come home across the hall because she loves them. They have a four-year-old daughter who she adores, and she has learned the sound of their door. Okay, come on. Come on. So she goes to my door. Whenever she hears it, she comes screaming, and it's very cute. Sasha, come on. That's not the anthem? 
That's yes, it is. That's the Slava Ukraini. It's not the national anthem. Okay, wait a second. I'll play it again. It sounded like the. Oh, I thought that was the. I okay. Let me anyway. Let me finish playing. I thought it was. Hold on. It sounds like it though, does it? Or am I crazy that it sounds like the national anthem? She's Ukrainian. Okay, tell me the story here before I start playing it. Tell me because I it, it was actually a former Ukrainian diplomat who retweeted it and said and said thank you Estonia, but he didn't explain what it was. So tell me really quick what it is. Okay, it's a folk song. What else? Real quick. I just want folks to tell me so I can tell you guys it's a folk song. And what's the deal with Ukraine with this? It's their beautiful battle song now. Um, oop, and of course it's drizzling outside. So I can have, oh, hold on. Hold on. Oh, it's not drizzling. Okay, go on, go on. Of course she wants to go out. Um, it's a song that got really popular during the war. All right. Um, but wh what's the tie to Estonia? What's the tie to Estonia here? He thanked Estonia for this. Are these Euston Estonians, Estonians? <laughs> are these Estonians doing the song? Okay, it was made famous by a singer who joined the army and sang it on TikTok. Oh, this is the same, this is the same Pink Floyd song? Lithuania sung it first for the Ukrainian singer who was in Lithuania. It's a folk song. It started with the singer with the Ukrainian band Boombox singing it in Kiev. And so now it's become the battle song. Ah, okay. Estonia is showing support for Ukraine. So this is Esto this is so Estonia did this version. Okay. It's an Estonian choir doing this version, showing support for Ukraine. I got it now. Okay. Well, now she wants to come in. Of course, I knew this was gonna happen. Come right back in. Big surprise. All right. Well, even better, because now I can play it and now you know the story. So this is perfect. All right, guys, hang on a sec. I totally thought that was the the Slava Ukraine, like the 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 national anthem song. I mean, hang on. The song sings about how Ukraine has fallen sad like the red verbena. Keep going, Dasha. And that the people will rise up again or will raise it up again. Somebody's saying it was first written to show the downfall of Ukrainian statehood in possibly the 17th century. For some reason, our Ukraine has saddened, but we will pick up the red verbena. It almost sounds a little Soviet to me, too, not to be negative, you know what I mean? But the... the, the the tenor of it and our Ukraine will cheer up oh interesting due to the song's association with the Ukrainian people's aspiration for independence singing of the song thank you for that on TikTok Canada Singing of the song was banned during the period in which Ukraine was a Soviet Republic. Interesting. Oh, that wasn't the, oh. Oh, it only goes two minutes and 20. Sorry. So I'm guessing somebody probably grabbed this off of, of Twitter now is where I realized I thought it was the whole version. Uh, anyway, I did not know all of that. You know, I keep hearing, now, okay, now I'm getting annoyed. Oh, I don't have my election in front of me. Hold on. Because I... Hold on, let me hear the Ukrainian national anthem because I am totally confused as to which is which now. Hang on. All right. 
Oh, right. Right, right, right. Yep, I got it now. Yep. I'd heard that other song so many times, I was mixing them up. I got it now, you guys, yep. Yep, so verbena is a red berry. I was going to ask about that. Verburnum. It's a berry, red berries, verburnum. Okay, very interesting. Anyway, wasn't that great, though? Oh, my God. It's, um, anyway, I just thought that was beautiful. All right, guys, so let's, <laughs> thank, you for, thank you for my Borg, my Borg head. Um, I am going to lower my temperature a bit because the, the, the apartment's getting cold or warm again maybe because I've been talking so much. And uh, let's jump into the Q&A. So as you know, like I said, enter the questions in the boxes for you guys. For you all, use the, uh, the Q&A thing at the bottom. Daniel O'Neill is back, our Irish friend who has not been nuked. That's always good to know. Um, Daniel... A, a Moldovan friend knows a guy in Moscow who is bragging about killing several civilians in Ukraine. I think for Russian soldiers, this is about some sort of messed up macho crusade or Viking style invasion. <sighs> you know, there was a, um, um, there's a article that I read recently about violence in, in Russia and how violence is really sort of endemic, unfortunately, in Russian culture. And it was talking about schools and workplaces and certainly the military, but even beyond the military. And I'm forgetting some of the details, but it was just, it was saying culture-wide violence that we would consider unacceptable. I and mean, we have a violent culture, obviously, in America, but, but violence we would consider unacceptable is like totally acceptable there. And in the military, again, there's, there's widespread violence that is acceptable and you then transfer that to violence against civilians and everything else. Really messed up. Um, but yeah, bragging about killing several civilians. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Just, you know, yeah. All right. Let me pull up a question on TikTok here. <clears throat> I don't think Taiwan's going to be attacked. I mean, we, I, I'll, I'll talk about this only because Biden, I mean, it's not Ukraine, but as we said, we're happy to do some other, other issues as well. Um, President Biden was in... Korea or Japan at the time. I don't know which he was in. And he was asked about Taiwan. And the question was something to the effect of, I know you don't want to, you know, invade Ukraine militarily, but would you, you know, I'm paraphrasing here, but you know, would you do it in Taiwan's case? And he basically said, oh, in Taiwan's case, yes, we would go in militarily or something like that. And Biden made clear he meant in contrast to Ukraine, we would go in if China attacked Taiwan. And, you know, thank you, Grandma. The Some of the Asians were kind of freaking out. I'm sure some of the Asians were very happy. Probably the Taiwanese were very happy. The White House started to step back Biden's statement, which they always do, which drives me crazy. Um, if anything... I think Biden's statement has probably made it probably made it less likely that Taiwan is going to be attacked. That would be my guess, <laughs> because he's made it a little a little more scary for uh, for the Chinese. So that would be my guess at this point. I don't think it's making it more likely. Um, I don't think Western no Western European. So uh, one Christian asks: Are Western European countries in bed with Russia? No, it's you know. This is, and this is something that I'm sure that our European visitors could explain better than me, but there has always been a different approach towards Russia coming from Europe uh, in, as, in contrast to America. You know, we generally have had a much more boom, boom, boom approach to dealing with Russia and the Europeans. And I think, thank you, Flower Lady. Oh, NJR. <laughs> I think for the Europeans, and it makes sense, especially like in the 80s and that era, the Europeans were on the front. You're still on the front line. I mean, the Europeans are right there, right? I mean, Greece, the Greeks were talking about their 500 miles from or so, I believe this is 500 miles from Ukraine. You know, a lot of Europe isn't that far from Russia. And the concern back then was now probably less concerned because we know the Russian military isn't as good as we thought. But the concern certainly in the 80s and before was that the Russians were going to come in and they were going to come right through, you know, right through Poland, East Germany, right into Germany. Uh, this was it the Fulda Gap. Yeah, Fulda Gap. This area in Germany they were going to come through. So 
the for the Europeans, it, it, Russia's closer. And when you're closer to somebody that big and scary, you know, certainly you could be more bellicose. And I will say this, look at the Baltic states. The Baltic states are as close as you can get to Russia. And they're just like uh, 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 with Russia all the time, right? Whereas I think France, Germany, England, I mean, the UK, not so much. The UK is more like America, I think. But France and Germany, definitely more, let's try to figure out a way of working with Russia. And we are more like, I would say the Baltic states are even more than us. Because I kind of laugh when I see the things that the Baltic states say and, and do with respects to Russia. I'm always like, damn. I mean, I like it, but I'm like, damn. You know, so so it is interesting. I mean, I'll leave it at that. I, I they're They're not in bed with Russia. They have certainly different concerns. As an American, it's annoying. <laughs> and as an American who definitely is more uh, about, about these matters when it comes to Russia, but I'm more than happy to acknowledge that it's complicated, you know, as far as how the Europeans approach this. Um, yeah, Orban's state of emergency, that was fun. Um, Orban has, uh, let me see here. If, oh, sorry, Raggedy Android first, yeah. Um, Zelensky clarified he won't go to the table until they pull back to the pre-February 24th borders. But once he gets to the table, Crimea and Donbass won't be on it. Oh, okay. I did not. That's interesting. I did not see the second part of that. I just saw the first part quoting. The first part was in Ukrainian media quoting Zelensky's. Tw uh, he tweeted about it, among other things, or it was on the presidential Twitter feed. But they didn't put that second part that Crimea and Donbass won't be on the table. Good, good. And, and this was specifically, was it, it was Italy's uh, peace proposal this week when Italy said that uh, we need an immediate ceasefire and there needed to be immediate bilateral negotiation or whatever about the status of Donbass. In other words, the region in Eastern Ukraine and Crimea. And I was saying, so they're supposed to negotiate, like they're supposed to, what do you mean? They're going to negotiate the status of Ukraine's own land. Why should they negotiate that status? And that's in essence what's... No, this is interesting. This is good, actually. I think this is very good. This shows that Zelensky kind of put his foot down. I mean, he did put his foot down and said, no, we're not doing this. And at least so far, so far, he can get away with it. Because even though uh, interest is waning a bit in the West, just because you know other issues are going on now, I don't know that support is waning. I still think people in the West support Ukraine. So... Uh, Zelensky still has, you know, a card he can play in terms of of going after folks, you know, basically going after folks in the West if they're not helpful. Um, where's the. Uh, do, 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 do. Sorry, I'm just seeing here. Oh, OK. Yeah. Sorry, Syndicate. Let me pull up some of your tweets. Syndicate was tweeting. Syndicate was messaging about the state of emergency that uh, that was just declared in Hungary by their wonderful wannabe dictator Orban. Um, Orban imposes new state of emergency in Hungary, saying Ukraine war poses a constant danger. Yeah, I love that he invoked the Ukraine war as the reason. It was like, how is the Ukraine war posing a danger to Hungary? I mean, I mean, it's not like I just it's I mean, not yet. Right. And if it, it well, actually if it did, then all of NATO's at war. So what what's going on? I mean, no other NATO country has had to basically rescind civil liberties in their democracy. Now, Orban, I read, had done this with COVID, and I'm forgetting what else. There was another situation he had invoked a state of emergency, but one was COVID and there was something else, and now he's doing it for this. Um, syndicate had a follow-up on this. Well, Hungary's on the edge of dictatorship. We kind of knew that. I mean, I mean, I'm not knocking you, but I mean, that's been an ongoing problem. Um, oh, here we go. Anyone who publicizes false or did, oh, this is, this is pure Russia here. This is the Russia law. Anyone who publicizes false or distorted facts that interfere with the successful protection of the public or that alarm or, or that alarm or agitate the public could be punished by up to five years in prison. So if you alarm or agitate the public, wow. I mean, I agitate the public every day with the work I do. Wow. That is, that is pure Russian what he's doing there, man. No, Hungary, Europe's got to figure out what they're going to do about Hungary. So does NATO. But Hungary under Orban is no longer a democracy. And, you know, I mean, we were worried about Poland because Poland kind of, you know, 
not great on this. Poland, you've had a little, you've had some issues on the civil, on the civil rights thing and the human rights thing with your president. Um, and, you know, culturally a little bit, but this Hungary thing is far beyond Poland. I mean, way beyond. Wow. No, they've got, I mean, they don't want to sort of be losing more countries from the EU and NATO. Certainly I don't, NATO's, NATO's never kicked anybody out, but you know, Orban has to decide whose side he wants to be on because I mean, does the EU, I'd be curious about whether the EU really needs, needs Hungary. I'm not sure NATO needs Hungary. Obviously we wouldn't want to lose countries and establish that precedence, but, and, and Hungary would be a bigger pain if it weren't part of NATO. But there's a part of me that's like, you know, you know, the only problem is right. You clean house with Hungary and then does Turkey go too? I mean, you don't, you don't want to get into this sort of Brexit kind of thing because it only helps the bad guys if that happens. Uh, let me pull up another question on TikTok. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I don't have the name of the blogger with the 3 million followers. Google it though, Russian military bloggers. I would Google Russian military bloggers uh, telegram and you may come up with him because he's one of the big guys. So he would be quoted in the articles. Um, let me see. Will a long war affect Ukrainian success? That's interesting from Eric Champin. Um, I mean, a long war doesn't help Russia, <coughs> right? Because they don't have the money, the troops, or the equipment. The problem comes with, excuse me, Ukraine itself, because they're going to need ongoing Western support to have the money and the equipment. So a long war, at least initially, favors Ukraine. Because Russia, pretty soon, I mean, they, pretty soon, Russia's going to have to start digging in, like in the next few weeks, possibly. You know, they're going to sort of grab what they can in the next few weeks and then dig in and hope the Ukrainians can't dig them out. And, and they're going to sit there while the Ukrainians keep attacking and attacking and attacking. Um, but, you know, but at some point, and the other problem is for Ukraine, which Russia hopes happens, this is really hard on the Ukrainian economy, right? We know that too. You know, how long can the Ukrainian economy handle this? How long can Ukrainian cities handle this with grain and hunger and everything else? So, you know, it's, it's, and, and, but having said that, how long can Russia handle the, uh, the sanctions? Margaret K. Why is Biden willing to send military to Taiwan, but not Ukraine? Um, you know, if you want to get into like the, the legal stuff, I believe we have a defense treaty with Taiwan and things like that. Um, Taiwan, well, for starters, Taiwan controls almost all the world's semiconductor chips come from Taiwan. Um, China produces a very bad computer chip. Uh, they just, they're not good at it. And the ones that they produce aren't that good. Um, they would love to get their hands on the Taiwanese stuff. So then China would have amazing computer chips, but even worse, China would control the market. Hold on. What percentage of the world's semiconductor chips come from Taiwan? I really hate this thing. Hey, Google, what percent of the world's semiconductor chips come from Taiwan? On the website, thefederalist.com, they say, in That's total, cool. Taiwanese companies supply 63% of global semiconductors, no. compared with 12% I mean, by U.S. manufacturers. Okay, well, Do you right. want a little more context? Not from that source. <laughs> from the Federalist, which is like some insane far-right rag funded by somebody nobody knows they're saying 63%. That's not the source I would listen to. In any case... My apologies. I don't understand. Hey, Google, shut up. Um, that's not the source I would listen to. Nonetheless... A huge amount of semiconductors come from Taiwan and uh, the Russians love to, I mean, that's, that's one big reason. You've also got a direct threat to U S strategic interests in terms of, you know, Japan and everything else in the area, Korea um, and, and, and China is the future of who we're worried about. It's not Russia. Um, but you know, it's a good question though. I mean, I don't have a good enough answer. I don't have a good enough answer to it because let me say this too. If Donald Trump were president, I'm not convinced we'd go. We certainly would not come to the aid of Ukraine. I'm not convinced we, well, not, we wouldn't come to the aid of NATO potentially either. And I'm not convinced we'd come to the aid of Taiwan. That's its own problem that America has to deal with is 
it's not clear what our promises even mean anymore, because clearly it's going to depend on the president in power much more than than it was before, you know. So not good. All right. I'm going to pull up another TikTok here. Uh, if you've got more, I mean, I know all the YouTubers, you guys are always chatting amongst yourselves. If you've got, let me look here, make sure I didn't miss anything. But uh, if you've got more, put them up. Yeah, Hungary just, as I just said, Hungary scares the hell out of me. What's been going on there? Um, oh, <laughs> Yulia, you're funny. Now I'm seeing your question, Yulia. <clears throat> um, what do I think about Poland helping Ukraine? I think it's great that Poland's been helping Ukraine, and Poland has been doing a great job helping Ukraine, actually. Uh, Steve, OG Steve, if you meant that to be a question, feel free to post it. Um that may, I'm getting the sense you might have wanted to post a question. If you did, just post it as a regular question. You don't, you don't have to pay for it since you already bought the Super Chat question. Just in case, that's what you meant. Um, okay, thank you, Alyssa. This was what I was going to say. Yeah, stupid Google's. Fo- I shouldn't have said the one. I was going to come up again. Quoting the Federalist. That was ridiculous. Yeah, the New York Times says 90% of the most advanced semiconductor chips come from Taiwan. That's the number I was I was remembering 93% or something. That's the number I was remembering. Yeah, like I said, Federalist is, is just a like crazy rag. Don't trust sources. Like I'm surprised Google is. That's pretty bad. Google, Jesus Christ. I have to write a note about that. I'm going to like have to tw- tweet that one later. The fact that Google like is pulling up the Federalist as a source. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, so 90% of the world's most advanced semiconductor chips come from Taiwan. It's a big reason to go to war. It's a good reason to go to war. Um, oh, <laughs> Tyson Ann wanted her mom to see her question up there. Well, now you do, mom. <laughs> so thank you, Tyson Ann. That's sweet of you. Um, and thank you, Doug, for the uh, for the owl. Let me pull up another question here on uh, on TikTok. Um Oop, 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 oop. Hang on a second here. How will the deportees make it back to Ukraine? Well, the problem is there is you're talking about the um, you're talking about the the folks that the Russians have kidnapped, and I don't know. Um, we're talking, you know, the number might be up to 1.2 million people now. Well, guys, keep googling the number and see what it is for advanced microchips. Google it and see. And I mean on uh, on YouTube. Once you come up with a number and a good source, put up the source too, and then I'll mention it. Um, but, um, you know, the problem is we don't even know how many people the Russians have. And we don't know who the Russians have. And I've talked about this before. How do you know that if your neighbor is, is it the advanced, all right, let's deal with the microchips for a second so we don't keep going back and forth. Is it the advanced microchips or microchips overall? So which one is it? <laughs> advanced or not look for advanced microchips and see how many come from from taiwan because i remember it being more than like 63 percent. that sounds low to me but see all right i'm not coming back to the microchips for a while now um so with the deportees you don't know how many who they've gotten how many they've got for example you come back you finally move back home because the fighting's over or whatever or at least it's safe and your neighbors are gone were your neighbors killed in the war were your neighbors um uh, uh, are they taking refuge in Poland, right? If the neighbor parents come back, where are their kids? Do their kids die? Do their kids run away? Are they with somebody, but are they injured and perhaps they lost their memory? Are they injured in a hospital and waiting to get better? I mean, who knows? Who knows, you know? Um, so I don't know. It's really horrific what the Russians did by forcing all of these people to go to Russia, whether they're abducted or whether, mind you, one of the things that I was bringing up was we had, I had posted this letter from a guy who had gotten out of Mariupol at the uh, end of March and I, uh, friends knew him and uh, he wanted to, he wrote a letter about it and they want, he wanted it published. So a friend translated it and I published it on, on my, uh, couple different sites that I have on my Substack, actually. And what he was saying was he was trying to leave Mariupol. The Russians wouldn't let him leave. And I mean, what they would do is you'd get to the border and they would say, no, no, no. You know, it's, it's, and the best part was it was in their best interest. It's not safe for you. There's shelling going on. You've got to go back. And they would keep saying, well, finally they got out of Mariupol, like through a river and had to swim in the river for three hours. I mean, horrible experience. 
at one point they get back to a Russian checkpoint. Like they just can't get out of the surrounding area. And the Russians finally tell them, oh yeah, yeah, you can evacuate the area. But again, the only safe way is this way. Well, basically the Russians were forcing everybody to go to Russia. And they, I mean, from Mariupol, mind you, hell of a distance. They were forcing them to go to Russia. And they were, he said, he was fine going for a short while. Now, I don't know if he's there for a short while, but he was fine going for a short while for a few days. And he had a visa or some kind of thing that made it okay. But he said 85 to 90% of the people he was with who were going to Russia? No, no, excuse me. He said 85 to 90% of the people had no idea what was going on. Everyone was going to Russia. They weren't letting anybody not go to Russia. And 85 to 90% had no idea they were going to Russia. They were being forced to go and they were simply told, oh, go this way. This is the safe way to go. Now, extrapolate that at large. How many of these one or 1.2 million people, Ukrainians in Russia were either kidnapped, abducted, whatever you want to call this. And again, if the Russians don't tell us, what do you do? If they don't want to tell you who they've got, how do you petition them to get the people back? How do you know if they've ever given you <laughs> whose birthday we're celebrating? How do you know? Um, how do you know if they've if they're if they've if they're even holding somebody unless they admit it? You know, I mean, you could say leave the sanctions on until the Russians admit they've got everybody. How do you know if they've admitted everybody? We don't know who they have. No, it's very it's very bad. Yeah, DPN. I don't. Uh, I don't sing happy birthday without a uh, without a sizable super chat. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. But I'm happy to put up other happy birthdays for everybody else. Everybody wish DPN a happy birthday. There we go. Glammy's giving you a happy birthday. Um, let me jump to another uh, another question here. Kissinger needs to keep his mouth shut. Honest to God. Um, possible solutions. This is interesting. Fuse is asking about possible solutions for the uh, Ukrainian wheat exports. Now, oh boy, that's a tough one. There has been increased talk about it. I mean, Lithuania came up, okay, the situation is, the Russians have been bombing and destroying the Ukrainian, uh, the Ukrainian farmlands and farm pro you know, production equipment. They've been stealing it. They've been stealing the grain. They've been exporting it to Russia and also trying to sell it on the open market. People, by the way, people are giving you happy birthdays on TikTok as well, just so you know. <laughs> um, and the um, what the Lithuanians are suggesting is some kind of a uh, flotilla that will escort grain ships out to, uh, to escort them, I guess, to open sea or to wherever, you know, wherever they're going. Um, they're they're saying it wouldn't be NATO. It wouldn't be NATO officially doing it, but NATO members are welcome because the Brits, for example, the British have already said they're interested, but they want to look into it more. You know, it's dangerous. There was an article today, I think, in the New York Times about it. It's it is very dangerous because the Russians are, you know, well, here's the thing: the Russians are threatening, but at the same time, a Russian ambassador on ticked on Twitter two days ago claimed. Um, oh, the the reason for this for the grain not getting out is all because of the Ukrainians. It's not because of the Russians. And I said, well, that's great. A senior Russian ambassador says it's not the Russians stopping the wheat exports. So let's start exporting the wheat. Let's get, um, you know, let's get some uh, some some escorts, some military escorts from NATO and not NATO, but NATO countries from other countries, and let's get the wheat out there and let the Russians shoot a British ship. Let them. Let them try. You know? But at this point, this is where you got to call these guys bluff because the Russians don't want this. And it just, anyway, drives me a little crazy here. Um, but I think, I think that is one, that is maybe the only thing that can be done or put a UN ship or have the Pope put his own flag on some of these ships, but make it so he'll you know, put the Pope's flag, make the Russians sink a papal ship, a ship with the Pope's flag on it. You know? Anyway, that's my take. Um, another, another TikTok. Oop, seven o'clock already. Jesus Christ. Wow. I didn't realize it was already getting that late. Hang on. Oop. Kiss the to keep his mouth shut. I agree. Uh, oops. Ah, shit. Oh, God. Oh, God. I wiped it off the screen. I'm in trouble. TikTok is going to freeze. Uh-oh. 
Okay, TikTok, you got to tell me, did it freeze or not? I wiped you off the screen by accident. All right, we're going to wait to see if I wiped TikTok off the screen here. All right, am I frozen or am I good? Uh-oh, did it freeze? Shit, I hope it didn't freeze. You're back? Oh, thank God. Okay, there you go. This is, works better. No, I was scrolling and the damn thing scrolled you off the screen. I mean, my iPad. Sorry about that. Um, there's no update on the steel plant soldiers other than the Russians are putting them on trial and the commander heading up the whole thing called his wife and said that he's fine, but he's you know in a prison camp or whatever. The Russians have him, but he's fine. So that story, thank you for that, JR. That story did come out today. Um, let me pull up another. Actually, hold on. I'm seeing if there's more here. Uh, what's the deal with, I am not like your dad with his phone, Tyson, and watch it, watch it. Remy said above, they said they speak Russian. What's the question about people speaking Russian that Remy was asking? I'm just curious. How can I get in contact with somebody who could speak Russian? I guess I'm not. Anyway, why don't you write more, Remy, about what exactly it is that you're asking, folks? I don't mind you asking, but what exactly what exactly are you asking folks for help with? Um, and then let me look for... I love when everybody comes together here and helps. Um, sorry, guys. Is there... Uh, yes, another Russian general. Well, actually, what had happened, Nick, was a former Russian general who actually was unceremoniously fired because he decided to go on a joyride in a Russian plane and crashed it. Only in Russia. But he goes on a joyride, crashes the plane, they fire him. He joins up with the Wagner Group, the far-right mercenaries, and was flying one of their planes. How the Wagner Group has military planes is beyond me. Well, because they're an arm of Putin and his government uh, and gets shot down Sunday, two days ago. And the BBC has confirmed it. So there you go. Um, if you're trying to, hold on a second. I'm just looking again here real quick. Um, oh, translating pictures is easy. Just use Google Translate for that. Super easy. Yeah, Google's fabulous for translating pictures of words. It, I was using it up on the screen the other day. We had a Ukrainian on um, on YouTube, on YouTube, on TikTok, who was saying hi and explaining where he lived in Ukraine and that he's got a fire pit at his dad's house somewhere in the country. And I put my phone to the screen and it literally is translating what this guy was writing. It was amazing. So yeah, Google Translate, highly recommend for any kind of translations you guys need. Um, so anyway, yeah, he's dead. He's dead. The BBC confirmed it. So, and I consider a former general still a, a former Russian general is still a Russian general in my book. So I think that was a good thing. Um, my lives don't appear in your live list because TikTok is evil. <laughs> That's why they don't appear in your live list. No, this is what I mean. Yeah. They've been, they've been burying my lives since last Sunday or so it's been, or since Monday, actually, they just bury it now. So I get like a third of the traffic. It's really annoying. Really annoying. Um, not, there's really no ups, update on the offensive stalling. Uh, lifestyle, lifestyle kink is asking. Update on the offensive stalling. Basically, it's still the same analysis. Uh, people think that the experts think that the Russians have run out of men, really that having a nationwide mobilization isn't going to help because you're basically going to have a bunch of people who go to boot camp, right? And they're going to go for 12 weeks training and it'll be really bad. Um, and then they get thrown into war and they're not going to do well. Uh, they've lost a lot of their good equipment. They're now uh, shipping in, what were they? They were, I'm forgetting the, the number, were they T-62 or something, but these tanks from the 1950s that they're shipping in because they no longer have any, any top line tanks to even use anymore. So they've had to go into the inventory of just, I mean, they're tanks, but they're from the 1950s <laughs> and it's just not good what's going on with the Russians. So they still think in the next several weeks, it the Russians are going to T-62. That's what I thought it was. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Um, they still think that Russia is going to stall in the next few weeks and they're going to have to dig into de uh, uh, defensive positions now, what's going on is you're still seeing 
like around Kherson, they're trying to expand whatever they can now, you know, while they're trying to dig in. Um, in the east, they're trying to finish grabbing Luhansk. In other words, I say the far east of the east. They're trying to finish grabbing that, which is what that whole Severodonetsk town battle is about. And they probably will get that. Thank you. Is it girls or grits? Yeah, I can't see closely enough. Girls or grits, whichever you are, or girts. Thank you for that. Um, so they probably will get that easternmost region, but then they're not doing well. Um, what's the, oh no, I'm sorry. I shouldn't say Severino Donetsk. It's not Severino Donetsk. It's, oh, I'm mixing up my towns in the east. Shoot. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said they were going to definitely get it. There is, I may be missing my towns here, but they're on the verge of getting a last town they need to get the far east of Rod. So the eastern chunk, but the rest of the east, they're not moving ahead at all. And I'm forgetting which town I was reading today that they're just, it's not moving ahead. Um, I don't think they're going to, from what I'm reading, it's going to be in a few weeks that they're going to have to start digging in and then, and then we see what happens. Well, no, then, then the Ukrainians start having to beat them up and they get to pick where they go on the offensive. The Ukrainians do, which is good for Ukraine. Um, are we still helping Rami here? Oh, wait, let me see. Melissa, did I have, I did have Melissa's super chat. Hang on. Oh, I'm sorry, Melissa. I even had I even had put a star next to your super chat to save it, and I and I missed it. I'm sorry about that. Melissa asks, "Is the U.S. sending special forces to guard the U.S. embassy, and will this look as if we are sending troops?" Um, the U.S. What is happening? And I didn't see whether he made a decision, but about two days ago, the State Department, I believe, recommended. Uh, Defense Department may have been part of this too, but basically, the government was recommending to Biden, our our government officials, that he send special forces to guard the U.S. Embassy in Kiev. And, you know, there the article was saying there's you know, some that it would break Biden's promise of not putting U.S. forces on the ground in Ukraine. I think that's a bunch of hooey. Um, I mean, the only problem is it's the kind of thing that Biden might worry about. But to me, that's a bunch of bull because putting troops to defend our embassy, you can always put troops to defend. I mean, is for the, the logical extension of that would be, okay, so if the Russians come in and they start heading for our embassy and say, we're going to kill every American in that embassy and we're going to do it on Friday, we're not allowed to send troops to defend our embassy because Biden said, we're just not going to have any troops on the ground. I mean, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I think it is clear what he meant. He meant we're not putting troops on the ground as any kind of a offensive or even defensive help to the Ukrainians. That means putting our troops in military facilities and everything else. But the U.S. Embassy, not to mention that actually, okay, and if you want to be technical about it, we're not sending U.S. troops to Ukraine because the U.S. Embassy is on American territory. If they want to play that game, we can say, oh, they're going for a second and then they're going to be back in the U.S. because they'll be in U.S. territory. So, yeah. But knowing Biden, I think Biden is having some heartburn right now trying to decide if he does it. But when it comes to it, they're going to have to send they're going to they're if if they're thinking if they're thinking that uh, that they if, if it was recommended to him that we need it, he's going to he's going to have to send it. He can't say, no, all the officials think they need these guys to defend them, but we're just not going to do it. You know, Um PB and J, you didn't. I saw yours, and I wanted to put it up there. Um, Estonian Prime Minister warned. I told you the Estonians have like balls of steel. Warned Western leaders not to make any concessions to the Kremlin, calling to mind a three-point negotiation. Oh yes, the three-point negotiation tactic the Soviet Union used to apply. Um, did you put the rest of it? It's great. It's great. I wouldn't want to screw up my description of it. Yeah, she did this a couple days ago. Um, sorry, let me see PB and J if you follow it up or were you just trying to trick me? Okay. You're testing me here. Okay. I'm going to say what I remember it to be. And if you've got the rest of it, post it. But she said that, um, as part of their negotiations, the, you got to post the rest of it though. But basically the Russians ask for something impossible. I think she said like, that's the first thing they do. Um, oh shoot. I'm not remembering the rest of this here. It's ask for something impossible. And I forget the other two, but her bottom line was, somebody pull it up. Somebody pull it up. The Estonian prime minister and what she said about the uh, the Russian negotiating tactics, if somebody can. Um, uh, I don't know about that syndicate. I'd be curious why you say that. 
Yeah, I'd be curious why you say that. But uh, but let me, you know what? Let me Google this. What the hell? I'll Google it and see real quick as we're talking what the uh, because it was it was a nice little thing she said about uh, Estonia. Mm -hmm. Um, three point Russian. Let's put that and see if that pulls it up. Um, stop calling Putin. Let's see. Is this the one? Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> well, she also said, stop calling him. I feel that everybody is constantly calling him. He doesn't get the message. He doesn't go. Oh, he doesn't get the message that he's isolated. So if we want to get the message through that, actually, you are isolated, don't call him. There's no point. Um, he feels that he's the center of attention because everybody wants to talk to him. But what do we get out of this? I don't see any results because after all these talks, Bucha happened. Irpin happened. By the way, all these talks means Macron. Um, Irpin happened. We don't see any signs of de-escalation. Uh, let me see here. Oh, come on. I'm not finding it. I'm not finding the three point, her three point thing. Shoot. All right. Well, this job is for you, PB and J. Well, demand more, but it was an actual three point thing. Well, you don't tell people it's a three point thing and then don't tell them what the three point thing is. It was demand more. Oh, and my friend, my friend Damien is texting so we can have a nice day tomorrow. Go out with the dog. Finally, with the nice weather. In any case, um, all right, we're getting close, guys. I will do a couple more questions, but we are getting, uh, oops, where's my Q&A on TikTok? Um, <clears throat> oop, 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 oop. Hang on here. World food crisis, we talked about that. North Korea, you know, North Korea is doing North Korea. North Korea is very dangerous, but North Korea also wants to be me, me, me. You know, look at me. Putin's not the only crazy one in town. I'm crazy too. Look at me. <clears throat> um, how to keep Ukraine in people's minds? Ay, ay, ay. That's tough, Carol. That's tough. I mean, thank you, Mary. Or Meryl. I'm not sure which you are there. You know, you, you've got to keep, you've got to keep telling the stories. You know, you've got to keep the news. You got to keep giving the news a story to tell. And it's Russian atrocities and whatever else. It's the it's the human side that the Ukrainians keep putting out there. But it's difficult. It's it's difficult because now, well, I mean, having said that, people do continue to follow a war. It's just not following like it was those first days, you know. Um, so that's that's the hard. Excuse me, that's the hard part. But um, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's all of our jobs in a way. You know, we all just have to keep talking about it, reminding people and and hopefully the media will keep covering it. But the Ukrainians are going to have to keep, <clears throat> unfortunately, finding unique ways of getting their story out there from, like I said, from the horrible stuff to the good stuff, ways to keep. Now, I will say, even though, um, you know, CNN has moved on, so to speak, I mean, meaning that CNN is definitely covering most of its broadcast is covering other stories now. They still are doing really good in-depth reports on what's going on over there, which is good. You know, so there is that. But um, thank you, Beneficium, <laughs> I'm going to say. How do you keep from getting depressed? Uh, you know, I don't, this stuff doesn't get me depressed. I think maybe because I've been working in politics so long, it doesn't, I mean, I don't know. I don't think it is. Um, uh, yeah, Mikola, you could go ahead. Yeah. We know you well enough, Mikola. Mikola, I trust you. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I just, it's, I think to some degree for me, it's being able to do things like this. Like, I feel like I've got an out because, you know, I'm able to raise money via you guys to help the Ukrainians. That makes me feel better. I'm able to do these broadcasts and help inform people and, and organize people like you makes me feel better. I'm able to do the, you know, the updates on TikTok all day long, which I feel like are helping to inform people. So I think, Having an if I don't have an outlet, then it really gets me because I care about the news anyway. So I would be, I would be, then it would get me more depressed because I'd be like, all this stuff is going on and there's nothing I can do about it. What 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 makes me more frustrated in the work I do is when I feel like I don't have an out of how I can get involved, some difference I can make, you know. So that's what always kind of that's what gets on my nerves. Um, yes, I am doing six o'clock. We are. I am doing six p.m. Eastern time, Monday to Friday, every day. That is the permanent time now, and we are doing two p.m. Eastern. Uh, so six p.m. Eastern time, midnight Paris, Monday to Friday is when we do these, and 
6, uh, 2 p.m., excuse me, Eastern time, Saturday and Sunday, which is 8 p.m. Paris. So as long as you keep that in mind, you will know. All right. Uh, the, oh, here we go. So PB&J is saying the three points that the Russians use for every negotiation is demand the maximum. Right. So demand the maximum, even if it's ridiculous what you're demanding. Present ultimatums and don't give one inch in negotiations. Yeah. 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 That's it. Right. There you go. And the Russians are good at it. Oh, well, thank you, Hannah. I appreciate that. Um, all right. Yeah, I'm gonna we're gonna switch this to what are you DPN? I'm gonna switch to the part where we just hang out for another 10 minutes, I think. I think I feel like everybody's a bit deflated tonight. I don't know why. Maybe Tuesdays for some reason. Although maybe with the weather warming up. Um no oh, thanks. All right. Scary. Well, you know, the thing too is like it's funny. They're I think because I, I deal with you guys here, that be, I'm putting it up. That better be right. Oh, in England, 2300. All right. I, I think when you're presenting stuff to people this way, you almost can't be as scary. Thank you, Iggy. To some degree, because I'm sorry, somebody was saying over on YouTube that I presented the news in a way that isn't as scary. To some degree, you can't present it in a scary way because you're dealing with everybody on here and, and you're doing it verbally. Like, I don't want to talk. It's weird for me to talk about the you know violation of women and the way they're mutilating bodies and all that kind of stuff. I, I almost can't talk about it. Like I just, I don't want to describe, not only am I afraid TikTok is going to ban me even more than it's already done on my lives. You know, they've already got me shadow banned on the lives, but I, but I, I, I don't like talking about that. It's creepy. I don't mind writing it. I can write it because I think it's important to have those details out there, but I think it's, yeah, any case. And, and you run the problem with any kind of advocacy and I would still consider this, it's news, but it's advocacy in the sense that, you know, my goal is to educate people and hopefully help, help whether they act or they help spread a story that convinces their governments to act, you know, whatever it is. Um, it's, you, you need to keep it happy too. And actually, I even switched that several weeks ago because somebody was commenting on the videos. They're like, oh my God, all the bad stuff from Ukraine. And I realized I needed to start putting more, uh, more fun stuff or, you know, whether it's some, well, like the soldiers dancing and the music or frankly, the videos showing the, um, showing the Ukraine, the Russian tanks getting blown up and stuff, you know, I mean, and some people got upset on TikTok about, but many they got upset because I wasn't, you know, lamenting the poor Russian tank operator. Yeah. The, the, the kitten was fabulous. And I'm like, you know what? First of all, for a lot of us, seeing those tanks get blown up helps, it helps me. It helps me a lot. It helps me to see the Russians the getting that their their troops actually getting destroyed. I mean, you know, it's and yeah, it does. I mean, I hate to say, no, I don't hate to say it. And for some people, that's too vulgar or something. And I don't agree. You know, it's one thing. I don't want to watch a person blown up. <laughs> that I don't want to see. But a tank blown up, you better believe it. You know. And if these guys are not innocents, they're not innocents at all. They're they're partaking in a genocide. You know, they're as innocent as the as the as the NZ soldiers. And we we all know, not only historically, but legally, when you look back at what happened in Germany, nobody looks back and says, well, you know, you have to feel sorry for the troops because they were just following orders. I mean, my God, like that's the number one lesson, not maybe not number one, but lesson of the of World War II with Germany was following orders. And I got news for you. These troops, they know they're not supposed to violate women. They know they're not supposed to kill civilians. They know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. Yes, let me give a recap. All right, Syndicate, I will give my recap. All right, let's do the recap. So the recap is, these are the stories we covered today. Um, gunman kills 14 students and one teacher in Texas. As I said, occasionally I do news from other areas. Um, so the, it looks like the Ukrainians are going to take Ukrainians. It looks like the Russians are going to take Luhansk very soon. That would be the Eastern, Eastern part of Eastern Ukraine. Head of Ukrainian military intelligence says that the Ukrainians will be in Crimea by the end of the year. Another Russian general is dead, this time a former general. Guerrillas in Melitopol blew up train tracks. Ukrainian prosecutors charged eight Russian soldiers and mercenaries with war crimes. More fallout from the push to force Ukraine to give up land for peace. 
Um, 82% of Ukrainians say they don't want to give up an inch of land. Russian bloggers, military bloggers who blog about the military are increasingly unhappy. And many of the foreign policy experts think that this is a sign of trouble to come in society at large with Russia, meaning people are starting to turn against the regime. Um, the neo enzies Putin is paying mercenaries who are literally neo enzies and very proud of it, who are working with the Wagner group, the Wagner group, and um, he's paying them to fight in Ukraine. How lovely is that? Poland says Germany reneged on a deal to provide Poland with tanks after Poland then provide 240 tanks to Ukraine. Um, the Ukrainian president's office pretty much told President Macron of France to stuff it with regards to his proposal that Ukraine could have a special relationship with the European Union, but not really be a member. Ukrainians aren't interested. The Russians are claiming that Ukraine came up with the monkeypox. It's all the Ukrainians' fault. That was a lovely one. And Google is providing Ukrainian teachers with 42,000 laptops. And now for my tough question of the day from Lori Keene. Would you rather live once and win the lottery or live twice as long? Meaning, be, meaning lottery, meaning be filthy rich. Once and be filthy rich. Because once you're not in your 20s and 30s anymore, anymore, you kind of understand sort of how the longer life gets, the more you're kind of like, you know, I've had a good life. <laughs> I'm not sure 200 years. Because also the real problem too is in your second two, in your second hundred years, everybody around you is dead. Everyone around you is gone. Everyone you loved and cared for are gone. So I don't think so. I think I'd rather be filthy rich for the first hundred years. And I'd be there. You'd think you'd want a longer life, but I've watched what my mom's gone through at 92. And, you know, most of her friends and loved ones are gone, you know, because she lived. Living's great, but not when, not when you lose everybody around you. So, yeah, I would worry about that. Not to mention, what, I'd have to work until age 150 to be able to, re to, able to, be able to for afford retirement? Dear Lord, after 30, you get jaded. Honest to God, though, you know, I mean... It is a good question. It's an interesting question. You know, yeah, Syndicate, what are you saying with this? Um, it depends on how long I have to live. If I would die in 10 years, I would for sure pick the longer life. But if I would die at 85, I'd go for the lottery. Yeah, I mean, that's a good question there too. Yeah, your mother's 93. I mean, does she feel sort of the same way? It depends. I mean, my mom's not depressed about it, but I just, I'm, I feel sad for her, you know, because it's just like, I remember my mom in her 70s telling me, she said, you know, it's just so creepy. Every month we go to a funeral. Every month we go to a funeral, you know? And this is in her 70s. After watching the originals, would you want to be a vampire, a werewolf, or a witch? Oh, I think a witch. I think a witch. Oh, oh definitely a witch. Because, the, I mean, the vampire thing always messed up with the vampires, let's face it. The werewolves, that's a pain in the ass. And you have no special powers the rest of the time other than I guess you can bite a vampire, but witch is totally cool, all the witch stuff. There's like no negative to being a witch, you know? So, oh, and I'm finally watching, I am finally gave Vampire Diaries another chance and I'm enjoying it. So it, I made it through the, although I will say this whole thing with Stefan and what's her face is annoying me. Like how many years can they go on with evil Stefan? I just, it, it's like too negative. I'm watching it, but it's a little negative, you know? Oh, what else? Where people are saying witch, 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 witch. Oh, yeah. Somebody's saying, uh, Leonard saying, or T. Leonard saying, my grandmother died at 97 and she said, my phone doesn't ring anymore because I've outlived my friends. Oh my God, what a horrible, thank you, Flower Lady, for that. What a horrible quote. I mean, that's the kind of, that's the kind of quote that would be in a book, in a fiction that you'd go, oh. My phone doesn't ring anymore because I've outlived my friends. You know what's funny, actually, too? My mom did say, I've got to call her more. There was something, we were talking about something, and I forgot what it was, but maybe she was telling me something I already knew or something like that. And I was like, mom. and she got upset that I cut her off. I was like, but mom, I already, like, I already heard that story. I know about it, something in the news. And she said, I don't have anybody to talk to anymore. I just want to talk to you. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> I mean, it was a very good point that, you know, you get older and you just start to lose the people that you would talk to regularly. You know, it could have been your spouse. It could have been, well, it probably is your spouse. One of you is going to lose the other first, most likely, you know, 
Really? Anyway, bah. not to get it. Look what you did, Lori. You got everybody talking about like sad stuff. Oof. You know? Oh, what else? What else? Exactly. Which you could. A witch can F you up without leaving the kitchen. Exactly. And a witch can clean the kitchen like that too. Bewitched. Vampires would live forever. Yeah, you have to eat everybody. I guess you could do non-vampire blood. Um, I mean, non-human blood. You missed the news on Ukraine, Andrew. Sorry about that. We've been, this is about an hour and a half into it. So at this point, about an hour and 15 or an hour and 20 into it, <clears throat> we stop talking about Ukraine and we just hang out for a few minutes and people seem to like it. <laughs> And we just talk about anything that isn't politics. So right now we're in the not politics, but I'm going to be doing it again. To, actually, every day, Monday to Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern, Midnight Paris, or Saturday and Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern time, U.S., which is New York City time. So sorry about that. But yeah, that's true. You could go. I always forget that. You could go on YouTube. Exactly. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I always forget to tell people they can go on YouTube. This is true. This is true. Um. What else? What else? What else? I got it. Boy, you got everybody talking about that whole getting old and dying thing. Yeesh. I know. Chilling time, but thank you. I have not been. I, I usually, I, I would go out of the U.S. a lot. I haven't been out of the U.S. in like, God, probably six or seven years. And that was to Canada. And as Goldie Hawn says, that it's attached. It doesn't count because it's attached. <laughs> so I, I have not, I've not really been anywhere in a long time and I need to go again. I need to go again. I'd work for a net. I'd consider working for a network. Sure. I don't think they could have me, but because I've done too much political stuff over the years. So I'd like get people angry. Half the people, half the people would get angry at me. Don't tell me not to yawn or I'm going to yawn. See what you're doing. Um, but uh, <clears throat> another coffee time. Yeah, we should do another coffee time. Uh, maybe, the, let's see, maybe in the morning. Let's see. I forgot about that. Yeah, we did a coffee time the other day. That was fun. Just kind of coming on for half. Actually, Thank you, Christy. I think actually it came on. I did visit the, I visited the Caribbean. I have been to the Virgin Islands, US and British. I will say this. It was, a, I, I, I'd only been, okay. I did not go to the nicest places because I was told by everybody that I should have gone to, uh, oh God, what was it? St. Croix and where else? It was St. Croix and somewhere else. They're like, oh, you should have gone. That was crazy. You didn't go because- it was okay, but for me, I'm used to the Mediterranean. So the Caribbean, I was thinking the Caribbean where I was, like the Virgin Islands, was going to be like the pictures you see of Jamaica or the Bahamas, which reminds me of the Caribbean, like in Greece, you know, or the French Riviera. But Greece especially, you go to those Greek islands. I'm spoiled. I'm spoiled on the Greek islands. St. John's, maybe St. John's was the other one people were saying. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and... It, it, I was spoiled on the Greek islands and I went to the Riviera and went, eh, and not the Riviera. I mean, I went to the, the, the Virgin islands and I went, eh, it just, it's not the Greek islands, but I think having spent decent amount of time in the Greek islands, the Greek islands apparently are a little more special than I realized. So I've been spoiled, but, uh, I've never been to Corfu. I've been, I know Corfu, everybody likes Corfu. I'd never really been on the way. Actually, I'm going to, at some point I'll go because we've got our family tree, ends up winding its way through Northern Greece up there and, and Albania. So I want to plan a trip maybe with my nephew to go up there to, uh, to go to the region in Northern Greece. We would pop over to Corfu maybe for a week or something and then go to Albania, which would be really fun and, inter and different, even though we don't speak Albanian, but there's a Greek region there. And I'm hoping with my Greek and with our Google Translate, we could find out a little bit more about the family and, you know, from the Albanian origins, which would be fascinating. And actually even find some Albanians that know the, oh, I would love to go to Lviv. Are you kidding? I'm dying to go to, uh, I'm dying to go to Ukraine. I'll probably wait till after the war, but now I'm, I absolutely, I always tell folks I've been, um, I've been, well, brushing up on my Russian because I'd studied Russian for a year and I actually still have some of it, but the, I can take you along and speak Albanian. Okay, deal. <laughs> um, but I was using Duolingo and I thought, you know what, let's try Ukrainian instead. And it just is too hard. It's funny. It's too, I thought the language was going to be closer. It's not, I mean, because, because they can understand each other. It was too different. It was way too different that it was too much like starting a new language. And with the Russian, I at least am building on a language I've got a, a clue about. So anyway, 
So I'm thinking I want to get my Russian better and then go to Ukrainian. And being an American, they'll overlook the fact that I'm speaking Russian. That that's my that's my hope. <laughs> you know, but uh, but now I'm I know I'm I think I'm dying to go to Ukraine now. Now I'm just fascinated by Ukraine. Always been curious, but it just you know, it's not the first place you go when an American goes to Europe. You go to Paris and Rome and London and you know the typical places. You know. Um. Yeah, I don't speak Polish, but same idea. Yeah, if you speak Polish, you understand Ukrainian. Yep. Um, yep, we're seeing here. But yeah, I've got to go over there. Memorize? Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Well, Duolingo is starting to play all sorts of games with these hearts and everything if you don't pay. And it's it's really annoying. I'll try memorize. I'll check it out. I'll do it right after. Or maybe I'll even do it now as we're talking. Um, because, yeah, if you don't pay, you have to get a certain number of hearts. And if you make too many mistakes... You, you've got to wait 24 hours. It's just very annoying. Um, your family tree is William the Conqueror and and a host of British queens and French kings. Ooh la la. Do you have a de in your name? I hope you have a de in your name with that. Not right now. Hold on. Where's my... Oh, mem... Oh, I'm saying memrise. Was it memrise or memories? Memrise? Oh, memrise. Here we go. Free language learning. I'll check it out. You better not be spamming me and tricking me here. <laughs> no, I'm kidding you. Let me check this out here. So memorize easy language. All right. Not seeing, maybe it is new. Maybe you are, because I'm not seeing any uh, editor's choice. Okay. Okay. So the, the app, the app, uh, the Google, the Google, the iPhone app people have shown, chosen Memrise, M-E-M-R-I-S-E, as a as an editor's choice for language learning. Somebody on TikTok said they liked it better than Duolingo. So I am pulling this up. Let's see. The link. There's no, uh, if you mean for this, you mean a link for something else? For this, just go to your app and type in M-E-M, M as in Mary, E, M as in Mary, R-I-S as in Sam E, Memrise. Let me open this up. Memrise, Memrise. Oops, see, that's... That's the word, M-E-M-R-I-S-E. -E. Interesting. Get started. Oh, interesting. I want to learn. Okay, let's pull up Russian again. Although I'm going to put up my other languages. Beginner. Interesting. It says it says choose your level. I hope, I certainly am not intermediate, but I hope it, uh, <clears throat> I hope it, it, it gives you at least a little test so it kind of figures out what you know. Because I do know some Russian. I mean, I'm not, I'm not starting from the very beginning. I know how to say, I'm going to the post office. <laughs> um, no, but I mean, I do know something. Let me see this. I do not want you to send me notifications. Maybe later, learn new words and phrases. Okay, I'm not going to start it now, but I will check that out. That's kind of fun. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, the Russians drive me crazy now. So the idea of learning Russian, I'm like, Ugh. I would use it for this kind of stuff, but... But I still, having looked at the Ukrainian, it was just too hard to start from scratch. It was confusing me. Also, it's confusing me because some of it's like Russian and some of it's not. And I was like, oh, my God. So I know everybody thought Kissinger was dead. I know he's 98 years old. Albanian, Spanish, and English. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. No, I think it would be fascinating to go to Ukraine now. Yeah. I mean, not now, but afterwards. Um. You know, I mean, it would be fascinating to go now, too, actually. I'd consider it. I'd consider it. My mom would have a conniption fit. As I said, my word I like to use for mom. She'd have a heart attack if I went to Ukraine. Um, <clears throat> but it would be interesting. Mm -mm 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 -mm. What else here? What else? What else? What else? Very few language acts have Ukrainian. Oh, that's interesting. I, did these, I didn't even look at these guys. I know the um, Duolingo does. I was impressed. They do. The pro actually, the, and the problem with Duolingo too was with Ukrainian, it was testing me, but I was doing too well because of my Russian. So it kept throwing me higher and higher. And I was just like, oh God, you know, it just, yeah. Anyway, I'm not, I may grab lunch while I'm out with Sasha tomorrow. We may. Yes. I've got to do at least, because it's a little, because I like to sort of post during the day as well. So I get together with friends, but it's usually earlier in the day so that I, I can get back in time to then prepare for this but also have enough time to uh, <clears throat> put up enough videos on TikTok, even though TikTok is being evil and throttling my lives, which really is annoying. 
but I'm just going to keep trying to build it up and say la vie. If I can build it back up, I will build it back up. And I, there will always, there will always be YouTube. <laughs> um, Freddie Mercury, David Bowie. You know, I never loved either. I like Queen. I like some of Bowie's songs. I am not a, I am not a fan. Um, when I say a fan, I mean, I'm not, not a fan, but I'm not a fan of, uh, of Bowie and, and Freddie Mercury. I'm like, okay. You know, Freddie Mercury died and people were freaking out. I was like, okay. You know, and Bowie, same thing. You know, I like his music, but no, I missed a super chat from Lori. Didn't I? I did Lori's. Did Lori's uh, TikTok unfollowed you for me? Um, what was Lori's? I did Lori's question. I did her this or that question. Was there another one from Lori? Oh, I'm looking. I'm a looking. Oh, that. Oh, I just said it. Freddie Mercury Bowie. Yeah, I just saw that. Yeah, no, I just. Um, I mean, I don't really care. Like their music is already out there, and I wasn't really following. Like, I didn't follow Freddie Mercury like lately, and I didn't. Thank you, D Man Stan. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, I'm not like I'm not wowed over by either one of them. You know. Um, Ah, what else, what else, what else? What else, what else, what else? Breakfast then, yeah. No, I do breakfast at home. I probably will grab lunch with my friend when we're out. We usually do that. We sort of grab something to make it easy and then hang here, watch a little, take the dog. Actually, if the weather's nice, we can walk for an hour or so with the dog, which will be nice. You've been to Ukraine twice. That's nice. Um, oh, you did make it to the end of the show. The Queen movie. I didn't see. I I heard mixed reviews on it, so I didn't see it. My music. I like progressive rock, alternative rock. I don't know what it's called nowadays. All the '90s rock, '80s and '90s rock is what I like. I don't like. I hate dance music. I loathe dance music. Absolutely loathe it. Um, and so any kind of music that's got that dance thing thrown in, I can't stand. Um, yeah, Wendy. I like Wendy. That's funny, Syndicate. I like Wendy. Did you find, did you say that because you knew I like Wendy or do you saying it as another suggestion on your own? Oh, be careful though. Remember every time we talk, I think, were you telling me or somebody else? Every time we talk crypto, the trolls swarm and pretend to be the crypt. Be careful of that, by the way, on TikTok or anywhere else. Um, a lot of the fake accounts, like they set up fake accounts about me. They set up fake accounts about all the crypto people I follow and they will contact you and try to pretend they're them. Don't fall for it. Be very careful. Thank you, Venificium. I'm somehow I'm gonna or Venificium. I'm not sure. Is it Latin? It's got to be Latin. Um, so be careful of that. But yeah, Wendy's. I always say that Wendy's crypto. Wendy O is great. Wendy O is great. Um, I like Blockchain Boy is fabulous, and as is Crypto Weatherman. They're all just nice, honest people who are just trying to tell you what's going on, and I like them. And it's no BS. You know, they'll tell you the truth. They're not there to sort of to get you to waste your money. Blockchain boy is his is his pet, his nom de plume. <laughs> um, you follow? Oh, that's funny. That is funny. But yeah, that's what we were saying exactly. That's what 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 Syndicate's warning is that once we start mentioning the crypto people, then all the fake people will start spamming you and everything else. It's really bad. So you just have to be aware of it. You know. Yeah, I know. Well, let me, I thought about that. I, I, you didn't have to, I thought about that when you said that here, I was like, Oh God, I'm making him put his Twitter handle public. Although Twitter handles, I mean, well, at least for me, my Twitter handle is public because I do so much public work with the politics and the media and everything I've done. So I don't mind. I don't, yeah, my Twitter handle, like I want people to have it, you know, it's my last name. Um, what else, what else, what else? <clears throat> Guns and Roses. You know, I don't, I never liked Guns and Roses, but I like some gun, but I like some Guns and Roses. Um, I do like some of their stuff, even though I'm not a Gun and Roses fan. I like some of their music. Yeah. Um, but I am, I'm a rock. I'm a, the thing is, now the funny part is, I am a I like rock music. I tend not to be okay. I like scorpions. I don't like Guns and Roses typically. I don't like AC and DC. I don't like AC and DC. I don't like AC DC terribly. I like Journey. 
Um, I don't like ACDC. Bon Jovi, same thing, like living on a prayer, whatever it is. is isn't that Bon Jovi? I think it is. Um, bon Jovi, I like some of the songs. I don't generally like Bon Jovi. For me, I would almost say music that people would get on drugs to listen to tends not to be music I like, whether it's dance or acid rock. <laughs> like, um, but I sometimes like a harder version of music like Scorpions. I'd have to think of who else. Oh, Nine Inch Nails. I love Nine Inch Nails, um, right? Which is pretty, but I but something about Nine Inch Nails is more progressive rock to me than ACDC or Bon Jovi. Nirvana, Nirvana's to die for, no pun intended. I love Nirvana. Yeah. I mean, Nirvana will be one of the top ones I've always loved. Queen, I like. I do not put Queen in the same category. For Aerosmith, not at all. But this, I mean, Aerosmith to be is the drug music. I never liked Aerosmith, Smith, which is funny. Green Day, I love. Yep. Because Green Day, you're getting more into progressive rock or whatever you want to call it. Alternative or grunge, right? I like grunge. Um, so I'm trying to see what oh, I was missing you guys here too. Um, Lincoln Park. Lincoln Park can be good. I'd like some of the Smashing Pumpkins to die for. Some Lincoln Park I like, but then a lot of their other stuff gets too. I, I'm already, I'm already, already forgetting what it is. Whether it's, you know, um, Flock of Seagulls, sure, but that that's getting into the '80s stuff. I love the '80s stuff. Um, '80s I adore. I like '70s starting with Talking Heads, and again, taking you in the direction of the Talking Heads is what I like. Um. Def Leppard, Metallica, no, no. Alice in Chains, some songs, yes. I don't know Billy Talent. Grateful Dead, I have come to, I had a roommate in my first year of college, first year of grad school. Um, oh my God, Gary, Gary Nathanson. Gary is now a doctor in New York City. And I haven't, I lost touch with Gary, but I looked him up on Facebook the other day. I'm gonna have to, I have to send him a message. Very nice guy. And Gary was the biggest deadhead. I'm sure he still is the biggest deadhead. And, um, uh, Gary finally made me appreciate Grateful Dead because <laughs> he would always play it. And I finally was like, okay, I can see this as, at first I was like, it's the same song over and over again. And finally I got to appreciate the music as, as kind of nice. Like I could see being, you know, but kind of nice, like kind of music. So yeah, that, that like James Taylor, of course. Sure. I mean, I like James Taylor and that stuff a lot. I still prefer music that, that picks me up. Like I said, Spando, Spando Ballet. One Republic, I don't remember. Aren't they a boy band or something? I don't remember. Um, who's uh, New Order? Love. Love New Order. Coldplay, I love. Yep. See, we're forming my Amazon music list. Billy Idol, eh. White Wedding. Yeah, it's kind of eh. Fish, I don't remember well enough what they do. Joe Jackson's. Yeah, I like Joe Jackson. I like Joe Jackson. I don't know Disturbed. I've never heard of them, actually. <clears throat> I like Joe Jackson. Um, Pearl Jam, I love Pearl Jam. Yeah, Journey's fine. Foo Fighters are fine. Depeche Mode, I love. Yep. I love Pearl Jam. Google Dolls was fine. But I only put them in the fine category. Death Toll is what? Higher from the shooting? I'm not surprised. Yeah, I saw that the Cobain's guitar sold. Yeah. In Excess was very good for their time. Yeah, I liked In Excess. Sublime, again, I don't... Echo and the Bunnymen was great. Yeah, that's... A, that, see, Echo and the Bunnymen was definitely like the, the college music. That was my college music that I loved. And that's definitely more of a like, woo. Very good stuff. I'm telling you, you guys need to put together my Amazon wish list or something or whatever it is. Maybe we are. I was born in the, in the early 60s. Rush is getting a little hard for my tastes. They're not hard, a little druggy. Stephen Nicks is fine. I don't love her. Actually, I do like, um, I, I, I finally, I finally like, thank you, Vendi Fischum. I finally like um, Fleetwood Mac now. It took me years. People said Nickelback. I had to Google Nickelback because everybody makes fun of Nickelback. I like some of their songs. You know, everyone's all mean about them. Rage Against the Machine, I just don't remember. I will tell you, Nirvana Unplugged, you know, made a huge difference in my life. That was, I remember watching that live and going, oh my God. You know, Nirvana Unplugged is pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Um, 20 people. Wow, that's awful. Yeah. No one's going to... I thought Oasis was okay. People hated Oasis, but didn't they say they were bigger than Jesus? Or they, were, they were kind of obnoxious, but 
I remember Oasis being okay. Tina Turner, she's great. She's not my cup of tea, but she's great. Alice Cooper, totally not my cup of tea. Jethro Tull, not my cup of tea. Um, Doobie Brothers, Steve Miller, they're okay. But that's kind of getting, I almost feel like that's getting into the 70s stuff I didn't like. Meatloaf, you know, uh, I like a little meatloaf. Yes, sometimes. Tears for Fears is great. Charday, Charday is great. Erasure is super great. Alanis is good. Queen is good. But they're not Erasure for me. Um, Boston, you know, I grew up with Boston. I can appreciate Boston. Alphaville, I don't know. Simple Minds, of course, is great because I told all that genre I love. That's the stuff I love. Bob Seger, now. I mean, he's okay, but no. I don't know where Epic, I don't know what that is. Sticks is great. I do like Sticks. I have Sticks on my iPhone. Um, your dog named Cedric, he can dance. Um, ELO is good. I do like ELO. Super Tramp is great. Yeah, I do like Super Super Tramp. Michael Jackson, some of Michael Jackson's, song, like Thriller, I really like. I like, also, I like the video for Thriller. REM's great. I like um, Molly Hatchet, no. I I like, and Spando Ballet is great. I like, I've told you guys this before, like Smashing Pumpkins. I like songs that pick me up and take me for a ride. And like Spando Ballet, the song Gold, picks me up and takes me for a ride. I love that. Um, and I find Young Campbell's is good. Talk Talk was good. But I, but I really like stuff that it doesn't always have to be stuff music that picks me up, but I do like music like that, that does that. Um, but 80 music, yeah, 80s music was fabulous. All right. No more groups. You're tiring me out. <laughs> and we're getting towards 10 to now it's seven 50. So I think I'm going to sign off guys. Um, we will do this again. Manana. God, it feels like the weekend for me. I don't know why all day felt like a weekend. Very strange. Heaven 17. I remember liking, but I can't remember what the song was. There was something I used to like of them. I don't know, favorite burger. I mean, a hamburger. What do you mean? McDonald's or Burger King? I don't know that I noticed a difference. Genesis is okay. It was my first concert I ever went to was Genesis. But um, but I don't know about favorite burger. I mean, hamburger is my favorite burger. Put cheese on it and ketchup, and I'm happy as a clam. Human League was good. All right, no more music. You're tiring me out. <laughs> okay, à la prochaine, Adrian, mon ami. All right, guys, um, I'm going to say sayonara. We will do a Wendy's. Wendy's, I don't like Wendy's as much. Um, we will do tomorrow, same bat time. I did the recap. You may have missed it. Um, and I'm going to go check in on this horrible thing. Thank you, Christy. Oh, a two for Christy. I appreciate that. And tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern, if you can, I guess, help me remind people, especially on TikTok. Actually, you know, I almost wouldn't mind that on TikTok. Go into the comments and just kind of occasionally remind people what time I'm doing the lives because, or that I do my, actually, what I'm trying to do is, like I put them at the end of my videos just to tell people, oh, Monday to Friday at this time, Saturday and Sunday at this time, because that way it's sort of evergreen, you know, no matter what day they come, just because clearly TikTok is no longer telling people, not no longer, but they're not telling a lot of people what time my lives are. So yeah, 6 p.m. New York time, midnight Paris time is the easiest way to make it so everyone can extrapolate around there. So thanks guys. All right, say my goodbyes. As soon as I see the bye-byes on on TikTok, then I know you guys got my message because TikTok's always a little slower. Goodbye to you all, folks, <laughs> y'all, and uh, see everybody manana. And I know you can all chat amongst yourselves anyway, so I don't feel bad about hanging up on the YouTubers. <laughs> all right. Bye, YouTube.